we, we've learned a lot about uh, the sort of cancer obesity connection in terms of mechanisms from the preclinical pre research. So um, animal models, particularly cell culture work, uh, has, has really kind of informed the, the mechanisms. We're seeing now translation to the human uh, population and uh, a number of, of interventions are uh, you know, showing promise to offset this effect and, and these are um, in, in the realm of, of uh, sort of a reduced calorie setting uh, uh, but uh, I think most promising are things like a uh, uh, sort of an intermittent energy restriction we call it. It's a sort of a pattern uh, we've been studying the 5-2 uh, pattern where you five days of a of a fairly healthy sort of Mediterranean style diet, two days of a low calorie, low carbohydrate is, uh, is showing some real promise um, for offsetting some of these effects. Uh, and uh, there are other versions of that. There's a time restricted uh, feeding sort of story where uh, uh, kind of concentrating all of your, your, your food intake in about an eight hour period. Uh, so an extended sort of fasting period seems to have, again, some really strong metabolic effects that's offsetting the obesity uh, induced drive of cancer. So there's, uh, again, these are emerging, but there's some promising and a lot, a lot of work being done in this, uh, not only in terms of cancer development, but uh, perhaps even, even more exciting work in terms of response to the therapy, that obesity related uh, sort of resistance to a number of therapies uh, we're seeing some offsetting effects again of these of these sort of meta metabolic uh, related diets that are uh, showing some, some real promise, improving improving therapeutic response. I think we're at a place where uh, the field is largely focused on the risk side of the story. What cancers are associated? Um, you know, again, we're not we're not very far with our therapeutics uh, in, interactions. There's, there's a, a, another story with metastasis that we're just starting to see. So obesity is driving the spread of cancer. Uh, in our hands, in our laboratory work, uh, it, it, it may be obesity is even driving that more strongly than the risk. And so, so there's some real gaps in the field that need to be studied, and that, that's one. Uh, but, uh, but I think the field also needs to really turn to the attention of, of as you were asking about interventions that might offset these effects. Uh, we've been so focused on identifying the, the risk side. Um, what do we do about it is the key question now. How do we reduce the burden? And so a um, number of clinical studies are being geared up for this, uh, but, but again, there's a gap in the field. Um, we, I was part of a World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer effort to look at not only the risk side, but also the reversibility side. Um, what, what evidence do we have that we can reduce the risk uh, with, with dietary changes. And it was the second question that was really, there were just insufficient data currently in the field. So this is an area I think that really needs emphasis. And uh, it's something, something my lab is really focused on, a number of groups are, are looking at, is uh, how, do we, how do we reverse this sort of pro-cancer effect of obesity and, uh, and reduce, reduce the risk.